again everyone and welcome to part two of my top 10 list of africa's most powerful women if you haven't seen part one of this list i'll have the link in the description below this list was adopted from an article written by lerato mohoate titled africa's 50 most powerful women according to forbes africa 2020 the link to this article will also be in the description below Part 2, I will be counting down from number 10 to number 6. And again, please note this countdown is not in order of hierarchy or assumed importance, but rather my favorite women from the article that I will try my best to include my admiration for them as I discuss them. And the point of the video is self-education, hopefully your education, and just a little bit of recognition of Black African excellence. Basically, celebrating Black Africans and their excellence. For the month of August, the focus will be on the feminine gender with every video celebrating black African women. To all the women of South Africa, very happy Women's Month. Let's get started with the list. And at number 10 is Senegalese superwoman Fatma Samora. Madam Samora's full name is Fatma Samba Diof Samora. She is from Senegal in the west of Africa and is a young 58 years old. She currently holds the role of Secretary General of the Federal National Football Association, better known as FIFA. She speaks French, English, Spanish and Italian and completed her university studies at Lyon University in France. She has worked for the United Nations World Food Program from 1995, which is Rome, Djibouti, Cameroon, Chad, Niger, Guinea, Madagascar, and Nigeria, and has worked in over seven African countries in the humanitarian field with her career spanning over 21 years. Her roles include senior positions such as the Deputy Humanitarian Coordinator for the East of Chad in 2007, where she coordinated support for the victims of conflict in that region. She was responsible for mechanisms for the management of emergencies in crisis areas such as Sierra Leone, Liberia, Kosovo, Nicaragua and East Timor. She was recognized by former UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon on the recommendation of John Holmes to assume her role as Deputy Humanitarian Coordinator. Madam Samora has also been noted as being proactive in her role at the United Nations by providing guidance to seven UN agencies and up to 40 non-governmental organizations. She was at the forefront of efforts to house and shelter some 180,000 residents of Chad before moving to her current role with FIFA. In 2009, Madam Samora was honored as a history maker by the Best of Africa Awards for her work at FIFA. She was named as the most powerful woman in international sports in, 20, in 2018 by Forbes magazine and was named as one of BBC's 100 most influential and inspirational women in the 21st century. She has undoubtedly shot through the glass ceiling, further proving that the greatness of women in what is considered a predominantly masculine industry. At number nine of the list, we move on to Central Africa to a country called Cameroon and talk a little bit about Dr. Vera Songwe. Dr. Songwe holds the title of Executive Secretary in the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa. Dr. Songwe is 52 years old and a powerhouse holding a PhD in Mathematical Economics, a Master's of Arts in Law and Economics, and a Diploma in In-Depth Studies in Economic Sciences and Politics from the Catholic University called De Louvain in Belgium. She also holds a BA degree in Economics and Political Science from the University of Michigan, as well as being a graduate of Our Lady of Lords College in her hometown, Cameroon. She is a non-resident senior fellow at the Brookings Institute Africa Growth Initiative. She is a member of the African Union Institute Reform Team, as well as a board member of the African Leadership Network at the Mo Ibrahim Foundation. She has held the role of Regional Director of the International Finance Cooperation, where she was designated to the West and Central Africa. She was Country Director for the World Bank for Cape Verde, a group of volcanic islands in the west coast of Africa, the Gambia, Guinea-Bissau, and Senegal, all Western African countries, as well as Mauritania. She served as the World Bank's senior economist in the Philippines and was advisor to the managing director of the World Bank 
for Africa, Europe, and Central and South Asia, as well as Lead Country Sector Coordinator for the World Bank. Before Dr. Sangwe assumed her current role as Executive Secretary, she was a visiting researcher at the Federal Reserve Bank in Minnesota and at the University of Southern California. Dr. Sangwe is a true example of an overachiever. She is simply dominating in her academic and professional career while being a source of inspiration for all girls and women all over the world. In 2014, she was featured as one of Africa's leaders of tomorrow by the Chisio Institute. Dr. Vera further recognizes the disadvantage that African women are faced with due to a lack of access to technology and lack of access to the internet as a whole. Her work speaks for itself where in her first year at the International Finance Corporation in 2015, one of the countries she was designated to being Senegal rose to the top of African countries for the first time with a disbursement rate of 30%. She was involved in the Brenton Woods Institute that was responsible for a project that made sure women had machines for shelling rice, enabling them to become entrepreneurs. Under her economic leadership, Senegal and Mauritania appeared in the top 10 reform countries in the Doing Business Report in 2016. Dr. Songwe sat on the Tony Elumelu Foundation and contributed to the Brookings Institute. In the same year, she was among 25 Africans to watch, according to the Financial Times. Number eight of the list and staying within the field of economics, move on to East Africa to Tanzania and discuss Leslie or Elsie Kanza. Elsie is an economist and the head of Africa at the World Economic Forum, as well as a member of the executive committee also at the World Economic Forum. She was born in Kenya, but to Tanzanian parents. She holds a BS or a Bachelor of Science degree in International Business Administration from the United States International University having passed with distinction and a master's in science degree in finance from the University of Strathclyde in the UK, a master's of arts in development from Williams College, as well as a doctorate in business administration, a degree awarded without examination also from the University of Strathclyde. Elsie assumed a number of roles, including in the Ministry of Finance and the Central Bank of Tanzania, where she worked as a personal assistant to Mr. Kikwete, former president of Tanzania, and she then went on to work for the World Economic Forum in 2014, a role she currently holds. She is also part of a non-profit and advisory board for the Institute of African Leadership and Sustainable Development and the Nature Conservancy. In 2008, she was a fellow at the Archbishop Desmond Tutu Leadership Institute, and in 2011, she was named Young Global Leaders at the World Economic Forum. She was a nominee at the Rising Talent Program of Women's Forum for the Economy and Society. She was named 20 Youngest Powerful Women in Africa by Forbes Africa in 2014, and she was one of the 50 influential Africans in the world by the Pan-African magazine, Jou Afrique. Some wise words from this formidable force are that leadership matters and increased participation of women leaders is great news, not just in itself, but as an inspiration to women leaders in all walks of life. Elsie champions and exemplifies women and their greatness, and she said that women account for half of the potential talent base throughout the world, so over time, a nation's competitiveness depends significantly on whether and how it develops and utilizes its female talent. And moving right next door to Kenya is Dr. Jennifer Nkwene Riria at number seven of this list. Dr. Riria is the group CEO of Kenya Woman Holding, a microfinance banker and practitioner, a researcher and gender specialist, and she is only 65 years old. She is from the Kivangare village in Meru County in Kenya, and she attended the prestigious Precious Blood High School in Nairobi. And just regarding Kenya and its educational system, as far as I know, the top performing primary school students are accepted into the top ranked high school on the rate of their academic performance. So Dr. Riria was definitely an academic achiever from early on in her life. She went on to graduate from the University of Dar es Salaam in Tanzania, the University of Leeds in the UK, and obtained her PhD from Kenyatta University in Kenya. 
Her thesis topic was Women, Education and Development, and considering what she currently does, it was quite fitting. Dr. Riria was the first female board member of the Nairobi Stock Exchange and the chair of Post, Post Office Savings Bank. She is the chair of the Women's World Bank Board of Trustees and has also taught at the Jomo Kenyatta University for over 10 years. Some of her accolades include Women of the Decade in Innovation and Leadership Award, Oslo's Business for Peace Foundation, Ernest Young, African Economic Builders, Women's World Bank and Marketing Society of Kenya, the African Business Leader Ford Foundation, as well as the Michael Jordan Foundation, among others. She has been credited with transforming the lives of women and their families in Kenya by providing access to financial support to these women who are deserving, as well as building schools in her hometown, Kivangari. This means that women can start businesses and provide for their families and further educate their children to afford them access to opportunities too. Dr. Riria once said, leadership is not about you, it's about us. I believe women are God-made leaders. People should not become leaders so that they can be worshipped by the people, but so that they can really serve the people with commitment and sincerity. And to echo in her sentiment, and to echo in her sentiments, if our leaders would heed this message so that they are not supporting of instruments that hinder, but rather promoting those that advance. And highly fitting for the woman that closes this video is our number six of this list, someone I appreciate for her role that she has been chosen to assume of telling stories and telling black stories. We have Chimamande Ngozi Adeche, who is 43 years old. She is world renowned author from Nigeria. Some of Chimamanda's more popular writings include her 2003 book titled Purple Hibiscus, for which she won the 2005 Commonwealth Writers Prize for the best first book in Africa and overall. In 2006, she published Half of a Yellow Sun, which was based on her parents' experience during the 1960s by Fren War, also known as the Nigerian Civil War, where breakaway states in Nigeria who were collectively known as the Republic of Bifra were attacked by Nigerian government forces, hence the Civil War. And as with a large number of wars, religion was at the root of this conflict. This novel became an international bestseller and won Chimamande the Orange Broadband Prize for Fiction in 2007. And in 2015, it won the Best of the Best Bailey's Woman Prize for Fiction as a special award for the previous decade. In 2008, Chimamande received a MacArthur Foundation Fellowship. She released The Thing Around Your Neck in 2009, which is a collection of short stories and published Americana in 2013. She was a Harvard Fellow in African Studies at the Perrin Moorhead Grayson and Bruins Grayson Fellow and a Radcliffe Fellow at Harvard University. In 2014, she wrote an essay titled We Should All Be Feminists, which she adapted from her 2012 TEDx talk and was featured in Beyonce's 2013 Flawless Song. In 2017, Chimamande published Dear Ijawela, or A Feminist Manifesto in 15 Suggestions, a powerful statement about feminism and how to empower a daughter to become a strong, independent woman. Chimamande is a bold advocate for feminism and feminist beliefs, somebody I definitely appreciate. And that brings us to the end of part two. Thanks again for watching and I hope you learned a little something from this video and you have been inspired by the greatness and excellence of the women I have discussed in this list. Yet a, yet a collection of women who are truly powerful black and African and who make me proud to be a woman and even prouder to be an African. Please feel free to let me know what your thoughts on this video were in the comments. Share if you enjoyed the video and subscribe to my channel for more inspirational African content. I'll see you in the next one. Let me leave you with some wise words from Chimamande. Bye. Well, you know, I hope it, I hope it makes you feel better to know that it's not just in Colombia. Everywhere, really, everywhere in the world. And, and never mind about sort of, you know, fem people having feminism and t-shirts and, you know, Beyonce's song. It's still, it's still a war that gets a lot of negativity. Right? And I cannot tell you how much
of that I get in Nigeria. Um, how constantly I'm told that people want you to shut up and write and stop talking about feminism because you're destroying marriages and you're misleading young girls and you're, you know, that sort of thing. I think what's important is um, to try and get people to engage is to, um, and it's not so much to, because I don't want to say <laughs> smile when you don't feel like smiling because that's what women have been told for too damn long. But it's simply to say, um, uh, make your case. And here's what I mean. We're enraged. We have every right to be enraged. But that person looking at you in your rage doesn't actually know why you're enraged. So make your case. And I like storytelling. I don't like theory because I don't think people connect with theory. But I like storytelling. And so I'm learning, for example, about this vast epidemic of, of violence against women in this country. We need to tell the stories and to humanize those people. And most of all, we need, I think, feminism in general needs to engage with boys and men. It's, it's, it's not enough to say to women, come gather together and be empowered. We have to say to men, stop raping, stop beating, right? And we have to say, um, it's true. And I, and I think we need to, you know, and it's something that we collectively have to talk about. I, and I don't think we talk about this enough, right? We, a woman cannot, by you know, staying home at night and holding her keys in a particular way and wearing tight jeans and all of those things, that's not what's going to stop violence. It's the perpetrators that we'll be focusing on. So I think feminism has to make a lot more room for the engagement with men, of men, about men. Otherwise, we're not getting anywhere. And so, so the feminist boys have to get on board.